Auburn, Alabama. Now back to Dick Stockton. Powerlifting Championships in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. 114-pounder Chuck Dunbar establishes new world records in the squat and the bench press. This summer in Madison, Wisconsin, Chuck breaks his own marks. Record-breaking performances again in the squat and the bench press. A year ago, as a 165-pounder, Mike Bridges puts on an incredible show. Three world marks, squat, bench press, and total. This summer, he moves up to the 181-pound class, and he needs this clutch effort on his third attempt at the squat to set himself up, eventually, for a total record in the 181-pound class. In 1979, Lamar Gant made a series of tactical errors, and those mistakes cost him his chances for records and a title. But in 1980, he plays it smart and establishes a new total record for 123-pounders. But amidst the successes, there are also failures. With the temperatures pushing 100 degrees in the sweltering contest hall, Joe Bradley doesn't fare as well. He loses six pounds the evening before the competition. And the man reputed to be, pound for pound, the strongest in the world, not only bombs out, he passes out. Some of the strongest men in America gather in the shadow of the Wisconsin State Capitol to buy for the individual weight class titles and berths on the U.S. powerlifting team, which will compete in the World Championships later this year. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Costas at the U.S. Men's Senior National Powerlifting Championships in Madison, Wisconsin. Already in this competition, we've seen several world records approached and some others broken. Working with us today, both up front and backstage, interviewing some of the competitors, is Tony Carpino. Tony is a past national champion and has held some world records himself. Tony, can we expect that record onslaught to continue? Well, as we had last year in Bay St. Louis, I think we'll see a number of world records both set uh, today and also attempted. The lifters are here in full force, everyone's in great condition, and there are a number of lifters in each class that could possibly win. That means with this keen competition, strategy as well as strength is going to be a key element in determining who wins first place. A lifter must select his uh, attempts correctly in order to position him for a berth on the world championship team. And we have the ongoing story of Larry Pacifico, nine consecutive times a world champion. Can he possibly start along the road today toward number 10? I think Larry's in great condition, and he should be able to pull off another national title, his ninth, and set up a, a berth on the world championship team to set up for his 10th world championship title, which will be an unprecedented feat in sports history. Ten titles in a row, and either weightlifting or powerlifting has never been approached, not even by the great Vasily Alexiev. So the stage has been set, and stand by for powerlifting from Madison, Wisconsin. Bob Costas with Tony Carpino. The crowd sweats it out, waiting for the start of competition. They'll see lifters ranging to upwards of 300 pounds. Sports fans probably have a mental picture of the ideal build for a running back or maybe a slugging outfielder. But what about power lifters? To answer that, here's Tony backstage. When we discuss the, the body types which makes one excel in an individual lift, I think we have three fine examples of it here. We have Paul Wren, former world record holder in the squad who demonstrates the kind of structure that one would like to have if he was going to be a squatter. We have a thick overall body structure with a, a large midsection, thick, short legs, and an overall compact structure. Now, when we get to the bench press, which is a test of upper body strength, we have Larry Pacifico, who's a nine-time world champion, who really demonstrates a, a really powerful-looking upper body with thick pecs, uh, pectoral muscles, thick chest, large round deltoids, and really full arms, and that's the kind of characteristics one needs to push a, a heavy weight off one's chest. Finally, we have Vincenello, former world uh, champion and world record holder in the deadlift, who demonstrates the kind of physique one would want to have to excel in the deadlift. He has a short uh, torso and very long arms and very powerful back. This is Anello's class, the 198 pounders, the standings through the squat and bench press. Jerry Jones leads. However, Esther Hatfield, Ennis and Sanger have all lifted in this next event, the deadlift, and not done especially well. Anello was well back in the pack. Ernie Franz, who's up there in the standings, like Anello, yet to lift. They both have a chance to close in on Jones. This is Jones' second attempt. He earlier set a world record in the squat. Is he psyched? He's ready for this lift. I think he needs it, so set him up for a 
really good total. They'll be the man to catch. Needs a good big pull. About 715 pounds on Wait's the going. Line. Wait's going. Looks like he's got it. Look for the lights. One red, two white. He does have it. Well, that's all you need is two white lights. Three judges, majority vote rules. And right now, he is happy. This is by far the best total he's ever compiled. Well over 1,900 pounds. He's in really good shape right now. Next on stage will be Vince Sinello. Vince will be trying to lift 732 pounds. He holds the world record in the deadlift. In his classification, a lift of over 800. And Tony asked him which is his favorite lift. The deadlift, of course, because uh, I hold the world records in a deadlift, and my body structure is suitable to uh, deadlifting. By suitable, what characteristics make you, you know, better than everybody else? Because I know you are. Well, I have a relatively short uh, upper back. Uh, relatively long arms and uh, a hinge in the middle of my back. <laughs> a hinge, huh? Isn't that illegal? No, I uh, had that put in when I was born. <laughs> and that hinge would come in handy as he tries to hoist 732 pounds here. This should be a piece of cake for him. This really should be an easy lift. His mom in the audience, she's always at all this time this. Wait, no, you got red lights. Why? I don't think his shoulders are back on that. Vince has a little bit of a problem with getting his shoulders back, but I I can see him making the lift on a second attempt. As we look again at the first effort, note the concentration on the face and in the upper body of Vincinello. Well, you really got to put all that into these lifts, and, and Vince does, this, does all that. All right, here we go. I'd bet the house on this one. This would be a piece of cake. He needs it, he'll do it. No question in my mind. Vince is a competitor all the way. His second attempt at 732 pounds in the deadlift. Okay, good lift. Everybody's happy with that one. Especially his mom and dad. They're always happy with him. Okay, I, I think Vince has got one attempt left, and he'll probably just wait it out, go for whatever he needs to win. Meantime, here's Jones. This is Jones' final attempt. Same 731 pounds. He can ice the competition with this, but this will be by far more than he's ever done before. This is not, I take it, his strongest event. No, he's a squatter. I mean, you know, when it comes to squatting, he wrote the book. He's not quite up to par on the bench and the deadlift of some of the other lifters. But right now, he's in first place, and this will just about ice it. Doesn't appear to be there. No, no, I don't think it's there today. He looks like he's having a little trouble with his back. Get your belt off here, right? Get your belt off. Get your belt off. I'm all right. No, he says he's okay. And it won't get any easier. The weights get higher, the temperature gets no lower, but Jerry Jones still leads, and here's Tony with it. Jerry, do you think that's enough to hold first place? Uh, it's going to be tough. I think Vince might pull it it's well within his reach i don't think he can hang on to it so i think i have won well i wish you a lot of luck thanks tony i hope vince a lot of luck too ernie france now with his second attempt at about 738 pounds he should be good for this he's done 760 i think he's got a good shot at the weight one of the older competitors. Yeah, he's in his late 40s, which just goes to show you can be old and still be very strong. Here we go. Bar's moving good. Shoulders back. Look for lights. Is it a good lift? Lift is good. Lift is good. Three white lights. He's pretty happy about that. Let's take another look at it. Okay. Here we see Ernie taking the weight off the floor. Pulling it up. Legs and back getting into it. Shoulders going back. For a 48-year-old man, that's one heck of a lift. Ernie's been around for quite some time, and he really just improves with age. And with that lift, Ernie moves solidly into second place. He's happy about it. The wave to the crowd. Now, his third attempt in the deadlift. He's moved up to 777 pounds. If he hoists this, he's got first place. Yes, and this will be the best he's ever done in the deadlift. I think it's going to be a real all-out effort. And let's see what he can do. He's got to give it all he's got. Not there. No, not today. I think a little bit heat and just a heck of a lot of weight. That heat and humidity, as we've mentioned before, big factor. Perspiration builds up on the bar. And as it's being cleaned off now for Vincinello, he stands as the only man remaining among the 198 pounders with a chance to catch Jerry Jones. Jones, who led after the bench and the squat, is in the lead now. 
Anello needs the 788 pound lift to tie Jones. And because Anello is the lighter man, if he gets it, he'll have first place. And He's he got it. He's got it. Lift is good. Lift is good. Three white lights. Anello is a national champion. He won it. He put it all together. And he's happy about it. His mom and dad showing the strain that they felt in the audience. Look at that back go to work. Look at that bar move, that back muscle, shoulders. Shoulders going back, all the way back. Lift looks good. Anello is indeed the best deadlifter in the world. And he's pretty happy about it. Look at that. He finishes dead even with Jerry Jones. But as we said, Anello, the lighter man, gains the edge in first place by virtue of being the smaller man. He wants the bar to know that he conquered it. And now here he is with Tony. Vince, how do you feel? Great, 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 great. You just won the Nationals, and you're on your way to the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I... Did you expect the competition to be so tight and so oh, tough? Yes. yes, but I worried about the heat and the humidity. But uh, I had to grip that bar. <laughs> I came through. It scared me to purse the champ, but he got me on shoulders. I can't believe it. Am I dreaming? No, you won. You won. You're not dreaming. Oh. What about your mom and dad? Would they help being out there? Yes, they're happy, too. Are you, are you thinking about the worlds now, or are you still, are you still in a dream world? Ron Collins, next. Vince referring to Ron Collins of Great Britain, a multiple world record holder who has moved up this year to the 198-pound class. And Vince Anello, who embraces third-place finisher Ernie France there, has a date with Ron Collins in Arlington, Texas, later this year for the World Championship. Mrs. Anello, like everybody else, breathing easier. And the standings as we look again at the jubilation of Vince Anello. He takes first place in a close call over Jerry Jones. Ernie France, at 48 years of age, comes in third. 32-year-old Vince Sanello, a schoolteacher from Middleburg Heights, Ohio, reigns supreme among the 198-pounders. We've seen world records. We've seen upsets. And there's more to come, including the 220-pounders and Larry Pacifico when we return to Madison, Wisconsin. Boots and Bob Costas with Tony Carpino, men's senior national powerlifting championships. As promised, the 220-pounders featuring Larry Pacifico in pursuit of world championship number 10. And possibly very well on his way. Earlier, he established a new world record in the squat competition. 804 pounds on the bar, and Larry is more than equal to the task. Earlier, Tony Carpino spoke with him and asked him if this competition is any different in terms of preparation. You know, it's just, just like the first one. I always try to get just as nervous and uh, just as psyched up, just like it was my first competition, which is, I think, is one of the reasons why I've been so successful. I, I want to be world champion this year. What's happened last year is in the past. I want to be this year's world champion. You mentioned psyching up. What do you do to prepare for the lifts? Anything special? Do you think about anything? Just what's, what I've already done it before. I know exactly what's ex expected of me. Uh, the lift's been done before, and I figure, well, if somebody else has done it, I can certainly do it again or do a little bit better. What happens with world records when you're breaking new ground? No one's done that before. Well, it always feels good to break a world record, but world records don't win contests. Right here, you got to hit the right lifts at the right time. If the world record, ha world record happens to be there, that's okay. I'll take it. Larry Pacifico, the most prominent name in powerlifting today. And this was his bench press effort earlier. 529 pounds. His wife, Carol, looking on, and she appears confident that Larry Pacifico can handle it. With ease. 29 pounds. Lift looked easy enough, but you notice Larry did go for his shoulder. I think that injury may be bothering a bit. Injury or not, he still has a lead of more than 100 pounds over his closest competitors, and apparently he's on his way to another title. When we return to Madison, Wisconsin, we'll have the final installment of this year's Larry Pacifico story. Steve Bob Costas along with Tony Carpino. We're two-thirds of the way through. We've seen the squat and the bench press, and now behind us, they're setting up for the deadlift. Well, they have a saying in powerlifting. It says that when the weight goes to the floor, that's when all the action begins. The deadlifts will determine today who's going to be first, second, and third in this contest. They will determine the placings. Right now, the first, second, and third. Pacifico, Dimaduck, and Johnson. And Pacifico apparently with a comfortable advantage. A lead of more than 100 pounds. Headed for another title. Apparently, not so comfortable. The people out in the stands, temperatures inside around 100 degrees. But nobody is leaving with Larry Pacifico in pursuit. World title number 10. 
He needs to prevail here, however, in the national championships to get a place in that world competition. And his first deadlift attempt, 683 pounds, but no, three red lights. What happened to Larry? It looks like they might have called him for not getting his shoulders back, Bob. Well, I'm sitting here out front, but you have the angle from the back, the same angle that we're looking at here, the judge's angle, and maybe we can tell. Let's look at the shoulders. Back straight, shoulders back. If he lifts borderline, could go either way. And but it went against him. Yeah, the judges normally give the lifter the benefit of the doubt, but in their opinion, the lift was no good. And now here's Larry, right back. 688 pounds on the bar. That's an increase of, oh, between five and six pounds, about two and a half kilos, which is the minimum increase in weight allowed in powerlifting rules. If he gets this, it's in the bag, but he I don't think he has it. it. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. He's in trouble. And wife Carol has to be concerned. It appeared to be a title in the bag, but suddenly he's in trouble. He, he never had control of the weight. I can't believe what's happening. I mean, he should have... Now you can get three months free with your adult films. More family pro Three. Something's going on by the table. Yep. Three. No lifters in there. Judge Lyle Schwartz is trying to explain a ruling to Larry Pacifico as they add some weight for what would be his third attempt. I, mean, I thought a man gets three attempts no matter what. Bob, I'm going to get over to the table. Oh, God, I didn't know the rule. Judge Schwartz is trying to find the rule here for Larry Pacifico, and if I'm not mistaken, they may deny him attempt number three. But he said it was my second attempt. That's good. It's your second attempt, but there's no third attempt. An increase. The progression is by at least five kilograms at a time, and a request for two and a half kilograms only indicates the last attempt. I still don't interpret it that way. All the international referees do. There isn't any, there isn't any question about this rule. I couldn't be more sorry, but there is no question about this rule. I still don't interpret it that way. So incredibly, Larry Pacifico is eliminated. He appeared to be cruising to another title. Suddenly, a turn of events has knocked him out of the competition, throwing the door wide open to a number of lifters, including 26-year-old Mark Timidon. This deadlift attempt of 738 pounds would put him in the lead and successful. He's got it, but the big story is still Larry Pacifico, and here he is. Larry, what happened up there? Well, I guess I was into a ruling that I, I wasn't aware of, I'm afraid. Um, if you only jump 2.5 kilos, which I did from the first to the second, I missed my first, I jumped 2.5 kilos to my second, I missed, that means I don't get a third attempt, I'm out of the contest. Well, how do you feel about this whole thing? Uh, what can I say? You know, there goes my 10th title down the drain, and um, I was just ignorant to the rule, I'm afraid. Do you think if you had a third attempt, you would have pulled it? I don't really think so, because I have a torn bicep, and, and I tore my hand on the second one, so I would have liked to give it a go, but I can't even do that, so I'll have, I'll have to come back next year. Larry Pacifico, gracious in defeat despite difficult circumstances. His misfortune is Mark Dimaduck's gain. Dimaduck suddenly in first place among the 220-pounders as we look again at his successful deadlift of 738 pounds. And the new leader talks with Tony Carpino. Mark, do you think that's enough to win? Not with McCann. you think McCann can pull a big deadlift? If he can hold on to it, he got it. What's your, next, what's your next lift going to be? Whatever I need to win. Whatever I need to win. I'm going to wait him out. So Mark Dimaduck says he'll wait for the rest of the field to try and catch him. But the big story, this man, Larry Pacifico. He fails on his first two deadlift attempts. A technicality denies him a third opportunity. And the championship is down the drain. Now Larry, like the rest of us, becomes only a spectator. Wisconsin. Bob Costas and Tony Carpino, you're looking at Mark Dimaduck. With Larry Pacifico suddenly eliminated, Dimaduck looms as the favorite to take the 220-pound class. He's the leader right now, and this is his third deadlift attempt. 755 pounds on the bar. 
Bob, this is the key lift for Mark. His grip is going to have to hold out. The heat is getting to everyone. If he can just hang on to that bar and get a good lift, he'll build up a lead that I don't think anyone can touch. And this is Mark's lift of the day. 7.55 is an awful lot to pull, and he will not be there. Not today. Lift is not good. He, he never finished the lift. He couldn't get the lift all the way up. The judges stopped the lift. It looks like uh, Mark is going to have to sit with what he has. Tony, he's headed your way. Mark, you think it's going to be enough to hang on? Like I said, Chip McCann is the only one I'm worried about. If he, if he can hold on to it, he can pull the big one. How do you feel right now? I feel real good, except for my hands. I could have did that lift. Came close to 900 kilo. Yeah, I'm real good about that, but except for the squat today, it messed up. Bad bench, a little, luck, little bad luck, but I feel good, real good. So the weight moves up now to 760 pounds. And here's the man that Dimadoc is concerned about, Chip McCann. Well, this is Chip's second attempt. He sat back and waited. This lift will put him in first place. He's going for first, and I really think he's got a good opportunity to make this lift. He's done close to 800 pounds as a 198 pounder. He's heavier here. It's just a matter, can he hold on to the bar? Will the heat affect him like everyone else? Getting ready. Doing a psych job on himself here. Trying to lift 760 pounds. No, no, the lift is not good. Never had control of the bar. Slipped out of his hands. He draws three red lights and falls short. Hey, I want that bar right. Bob, as you can hear, everybody backstage is concerned about the bar. It's been a problem. The heat, you can't hold the bar. No one's grip is holding out. Everybody looks strong enough to do the weight, but they just can't seem to hold onto the bar. The heat is definitely a factor. Chip McCann at the moment of truth, and as you can see, he got nearly to the top of his effort in pretty good shape. But the grip provided the difficulties, and he wasn't able to do it. Well, he's got one more attempt left, and here he comes out for it. Same weight. He needs this for a win, his last and final attempt. If he makes this, he'll go into the lead. Again, 760 pounds. No, not even breaking the floor. I mean, just wasn't there. I don't know if you can pick it up, but his hand is bleeding. His hand is pretty severely cut up. He gave it his best try, but it's all over. And one less worry for Mark Dimadoc, Tony. What are you thinking about the worlds now, huh? Uh, it hasn't even got to my head yet. I really don't, I'm really not counting on anything yet until I see what happens here. Well, how old are you? 26. Not bad for a 26-year-old. Yeah, I've been working at it for seven years. It's about time. I, I know it. A lot of help from you, too, Tony. Come on, let's, let's watch together. Really powerful guy. He's got the mental head for it and can hold on to it. He can pull it out, but I seriously don't think he got it. He pulls it out. I'd be very surprised. For David Snyder, the second deadlift attempt. 770 pounds on the bar. Trouble with the grip. I don't think he's got it in him. He's got another chance at it. Another look now at the unsuccessful attempt at 770 pounds. Had he succeeded with this one, Tony, it would have put him into first place. But he didn't, and the contest is still looking like it's Mark Dimadux. Mark is still solidly in first, but Snyder has one attempt left. But I really don't think he's going to be able to do it. This is that attempt again at 770 pounds. Let's see what he can do. Watch the lift. This is for the win. If he can lift it. He's got to give it everything he's got. He's looking good. The bar is moving. Again, the grip. No, he didn't have control of the bar. All right. He missed it. He I, got it. it. I, I got it. National champion. I got it. How do you feel about this whole thing now? It's really all over. Good. Really good. Really good. Did you expect to win when you came here? Well, I figured I, I, I just wanted to give Larry Pacifico a good run for his money, but uh, after a little bad luck in a squad, I didn't really know. But I, I figured whatever I needed to win in a deadlift, I was going to take. But it's not over yet. There is still one man with at least an outside chance, and that's James Cash. His third and final attempt at the deadlift. 810 big pounds on the bar because, Tony, he has no choice but to go for broke. He's going for the win, and on a good day, he can pull his weight. This guy's dangerous. He, he can hold on to it. He got it. Even Dimadoc knows he's a threat. He's, 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 he's pulled everybody in the Nationals before. Sigh of relief right now. So as James Cash becomes the last contender to fall by the wayside, it is over. Mark Dimadoc replaces Larry Pacifico atop the list of 220 pounders with Chip McCann second and David Schneider coming in third. 
And now let's look back at a day of disappointments, a day of upsets, a day of records at the men's senior national championships. It started with 114-pound Chuck Dunbar, a record in the squat, and then the bench press. Mike Bridges struggled, but salvaged a world record total. Lamar Gant came through for a record which eluded him a year ago. But the oppressive heat felled Joe Bradley. Jerry Jones thought victory was his. But Ernie France had hopes of his own. In the end, though, it was Vincinello. He struggled early, but eventually came through to overtake both France and Jones, pleasing his family and most of all himself. The heat made it tough for the competitors and the spectators. And the big story, Larry Pacifico. Apparently headed for another title, he was derailed in the deadlift. First, he had trouble with the weights. And then the rule book closed him out. Thus, opportunity not for Mark Dimidon, who made the most of his chance. Dimidoff had to wait anxiously while other competitors took a crack at it. Chip McCann tried. So did David Schneider. And eventually James Cash. They all failed, and Mark Dimidoff had his championship. For Tony Carpino, I'm Bob Costas. So long from Madison, Wisconsin. States has two different entrants. Young Joe Ladner, 20 years old. This is his first world championship. And Fred Hatfield, his first world championship as well. He's 41 years old. He's been lifting as long as Joe Ladner's been alive. Oh, it's not only a comparison of ages. It's a comparison of the rookie against the veteran. The rookie Joe Ladner against the wily old veteran Fred Hatfield. It can't come down to experience. And then it's the big and the small. Of course, we start there with the super heavyweights. Bill Kazmaier, who in some people's mind is the strongest man in the world. Well, much renowned as the strongest man in the world, but he's in the twilight of his lifting career. Rumors have circulated this week that he may retire, so this is utmost of importance to him. He wants to go out a world champion. Then the other end of the spectrum, the little 114-pound class. There, we have a man trying for his 10th consecutive world championship. From Japan, Hideaki Inaba. He is extremely strong, fully capable of lifting four to five times his body weight. Powerlifting is just exactly what the title implies. It is a sport of power and strength. Technique is not at a premium here. There are three lifts, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Each competitor has three attempts at each. And here is a most remarkable little man, the 52-kilogram, 114-pound class from Japan, Hideaki Enaba, nine times the world champion. He has the lead now after the squat and the bench press. This is his first attempt in the deadlift. If he makes it, he will be the world champion for an unprecedented 10th time. Just as easy as that, he does it. And Inaba, his 10th world championship. Oh, the amazing thing is that Inaba is a 40-year-old lifter. Now he must decide what he wants to do. Will he go for another world record? Let's go back and look at the earlier competition with Inaba. This is his squat. 225 kilos, 496 pounds, and by the way, that's about 7 kilos, his starting squat, above the European record. No problems at all for Anama on his squat. Then the bench press. This is his third attempt. 115 kilos, 253 pounds. He has already missed once at this weight that makes it easily now, and that is 10 pounds heavier than his bench press in the last world championship. And recognize that he is already the world champion, the first man in history to clinch a world championship 10 times. Now he is back out. He has passed on his third attempt in the competition, will go outside the competition to try for a world record. The old world record, 232 and a half kilos, 512 and a half pounds. There is now 514 pounds on the bar. Oh, this is like lifting two Joe Jacobis of the Washington Redskins. And he's got it. Oh boy, he made it easy, Paul. 
Yuki Anaba of Japan, 10 times a world champion. Now another world record to his credit as well. Paul, as he walks off, the officials immediately follow him to check his equipment, and if it's all right, it'll be confirmed as a new world record. A wonderful moment for Anaba as we look at the official results of the 52-kilogram, 114-pound class. Now, Anaba adds this world record in the deadlift to that he already held for the total of 565 kilos. And Fred Hatfield. Before the competition, Dave asked Fred about his young challenger. Uh, Joe, obviously, is an excellent lifter. He uh, he beat me at the senior national in, in America. However, I had a grip problem the day uh, he beat me, and uh, I don't have a grip problem today. What about this? Is it going to be a squat off? Oh, heavens no. They don't call me Dr. Squat for nothing. While this class, like the sport, is dominated by Americans, there's a possibility that this Britisher, Tony Stevens, could ruin the day for the U.S. He was third in the last World Championships, but he has a problem here. This was just moments ago, his second miss at 355 kilos. Away from the meet, he is a true British gentleman, but he hopes when he's on the platform, he's viewed a little differently. I would hopefully think they thought I was a raging lion, you know, when I'm out on the platform, but not outside the platform, obviously, but... Uh... On the platform, yeah. Definitely, yeah. I wouldn't like to be Mr. Nice Guy on the platform. <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy's done win. Well, this is Tony's last chance to win. His third attempt. 783 pounds in the squat. If he doesn't make it, he's out. Paul, it's very difficult to make a weight like this on your third attempt. He doesn't look comfortable with the weight on his shoulders. What? can't do it. Tony Stevens bombs out. His third attempt, it's a miss, and they help him off the stage. To come to the World Championships and to bomb out like he just did, Paul, is a tremendous disappointment. The squat is the most difficult of the three lifts in powerlifting. Here's Ricky Dale Crane of the United States to demonstrate proper technique. What the judges are looking for as you do the squat are no movement of the hand, no shifting of the feet, no movement of the bar as you descend and at the point when you are lowest the top of the thighs must break parallel with the floor at that point there the judges will ask you to rack the bar the lift will be complete so now it's young joe ladner's turn 20 years old he has been coached here by nine-time world champion larry pacifico 357 and a half kilos 788 pounds what? Right. I go. Yes, Used a lot of energy, but it's a good lift. It was smooth all the way down, Paul. Let's keep our eye on the top of the thigh at the hip joint to see if that breaks parallel okay, you're gonna have with to the knee. It does, and there's the drive upwards. Yes. So here's Fred Hatfield now. His second lift in the squat, 370 kilos, 815 pounds. Listen to the Swedish crowd. Get behind this lift. All he's known around the world is Dr. Squat, and they're here to see it. And that's why they call him Dr. Squat. Fred Hatfield, 815 pounds. A strong challenge for Joe Ladner to face. He looks very confident on the way down. He has complete control. He hits the bottom, and there's the drive upward with that much weight. A single, smooth, controlled, fluid motion. That's why Fred Hatfield is so good. Now here's Joe Ladner. He's added 44 pounds to the bar from his last foot lift in the squat. Now at 832 pounds. No good. He stops. Brian Smith, the platform referee, and his assistants grab the bar. And Joe Ladner is led away missing in his third attempt at 832 pounds. Paul, oh, this is just too much weight for him to jump. Jump 44 pounds in a squat is unbelievable. So that gives Fred Hatfield the opportunity now. 843 pounds, 382 and a half kilos on the bar, and Fred's ready for it. If he makes this one, it'll be quite a push. Looks good on the way down. He's bottom. Oh, 
no, he just can't make it, Paul. Nevertheless, Fred Hatfield leads the competition, coming out of the squat now at 815 pounds. For Hatfield, the squat is his best lift. Latner's best lift, the bench press, is coming up. Chewed out during the bench press in the 220-pound class. Fred Hatfield made his first lift at 474 pounds. Then he missed at 496, and this is his second try at 496. Now remember, Fred Hatfield has a long history of injuries especially shoulder injuries, so the bench press is very difficult for him. And he missed on his third attempt, so he is at 474 for his bench press. And here is Joe Ladner, Fred's primary opponent in the 220-pound class. This is his bench press of 518 pounds in which he took the lead. We asked him how far he thinks he could really go. Uh, I really believe that the mind controls your strength. And as far as the weights go, as long as you don't set a limit in your mind, I don't believe your strength will have a limit. So I really don't have any, any goals set. So with his bench press at 235 kilos, 518 pounds, Joe Ladner moves into the lead by 17 pounds. The weights are on the floor for the deadlift. Here's Ricky Dale Crane to explain. The deadlift is the ultimate test in powerlifting. Most people prefer the conventional style with your feet close. I prefer the sumo style with your feet wide, close to the bar. As you reach down and grab the bar, grabbing it with your hands alternately gripped to avoid slipping. As you begin to pull the lift up, not dragging the bar on the thighs, and completing the lift by locking your knees, thrusting your shoulders back. The judges at that point will give you the signal to let the bar down. So the battle continues between Fred Hatfield and Joe Ladner. Now Ladner has already deadlifted 722 pounds. Hatfield has called for 738 pounds. If he can lift it, he will tie Ladner with one lift to go. He's got it, Paul. So Hatfield keeps his hopes alive for his first major championship in over 20 years of lifting. At 738 pounds, Paul, the instability in his legs shows that he doesn't have much more if he needs it. So here's Joe Ladner, his second attempt, now at 744 pounds. That's 22 pounds heavier than his opener. The 22 pounds isn't a significant thing, Paul. It's the fact that he opened at 722 pounds. A lot of weight for Joe Ladner. Oh, his legs are starting to shake. He's not going to make it. The Ladner can't handle it at 744 pounds. He still has one more opportunity, so he'll go back and talk with his coach, Larry Pacifico, and they will have to decide what to do. And for Ladner, much of it is mental. Once I walk up to the bar, everyone, I can see the crowd screaming. I can see my coach screaming at me, but I can't. I usually can't hear anything until the lift's over. And most of the time, I can't remember anything after the lift is over. I can't remember how the lift was or anything until I see it on film or something. Well, this next lift, the most important in young Latner's career, a possible world championship. Should he miss this lift, then Hatfield will win because Hatfield weighs less. I don't believe he has the energy left in his body to make this lift. It's going to take a supreme effort. 744 pounds. No, can't do it at all. So Hatfield right now is the winner of the competition, and he still has one more lift to go. Fred wants to win this by virtue of lifting more weight, not on body size. So he's going out and make a supreme effort on this at 749 pounds. Fred is the ultimate competitor. That little jump right there is Fred's technique to relax all the muscles so they can more strongly contract at the lift. But it didn't work that time at 749 pounds. Nevertheless, Fred Hatfield wins the meet on body weight, tied with Joe Ladner with a total of 2,028 pounds. Fred Hatfield, professor, author, and now world champion. Hey, Fred, it's the Hatfields and McCoys. You don't have to go out and pull that. You've already won a championship. You've waited a long time, haven't you? I have, about 20 years. I can't believe it, but it's finally happened. Congratulations. We're really proud of you. Well, thank you. I didn't think I was going to have it in me, but uh, I predicted I'd win it, but I didn't really believe it. You certainly did. Dr. Squat, world champion. And coming up, the super heavyweights.
the statue of Poseidon, god of the seas, not far from the arena here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Earlier in the competition, Mike Bridges, who is pound for pound the strongest lifter in the world, scored a decisive victory in the 181-pound class. In powerlifting, the equipment they use is closely controlled. Here's Dave. Now, Mike, before you go out there, the judges have to inspect this equipment. What are they looking for? Okay, they're looking for measurements which are crucial, one-piece lifting suit, one color, and the most difficult thing is they don't want it to exceed more than 15 centimeters from the center to the end of the leg. In the knee bandage, we're looking at a two meter in length and not more than an eight centimeter in width. The wrist bandage cannot exceed more than eight centimeters in width and one meter in length. Our lifting shoe, we don't want a flared heel. There's no legal limitations to the height. Our power belt cannot exceed more than 10 centimeters in width and not more than 13 millimeters in thickness, with our buckle not exceeding more than 11 centimeters from inside to inside. This is what they're looking for. Thank you, Mike. Now it's time for the Giants, the super heavyweights, men over 275 pounds, and a fight shaping up between Great Britain, Australia, and the United States. Let's go back. Here is Britisher Andy Kerr, his third attempt at the squat at 771 pounds. He looks very smooth going down. He hitches there, but he still is able to drive the weight up and get a good lift. That's his maximum, Paul. So Andy Kerr made his squat at 771 pounds, 350 kilos. Then it's Australian, Ray Rigby. Boy, does he attack the bar. His third attempt, 826 pounds. Ray Rigby has had a bad hamstring. Dr. Ken Leisner has been working on that, but it didn't look like it helped today. Ray Rigby, a nurse in his home country of Australia, misses at 826, but did score at 804. Now, at 826 pounds, the strongest man in the world, Bill Kazmaier. Look at that face. He attacks the bar, too. Nice and strong. Work it good. Set it off tight now. Drop it in, baby. Tight. with that. Tight. Sit. 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 Yeah! Oh, he made it look easy, Paul. 375 kilos, 826 pounds for Kazmaier. A red light from one of the judges, but still the left counts. Kazmaier, in recent weeks, has had injury problems. I've got a, a shoulder problem, and it was, I got it from squatting, from carrying too much weight on my back. So the problem with me is that I'm too big for the apparatus. I have a very difficult time. I've had that, had that problem since I started getting inside of the bar and putting the bar down my back. So with that problem, it just has limited my lifting. As far as the squat, I hold the other three world records. And the squat is 980 pounds, where I've done 925 because of those limiting factors. Bill Kazmaier, a gentleman and a giant among giants. This is his third attempt, 849 pounds. Good, good, good. Tight, tight. Paul. Of course, in his career, Kazmaier has lifted much more weight in the squat. 849 pounds here. But look at him. There might be a problem with his right shoulder. That bar spans almost five feet in there where his hands are. Look how cramped he looks in there. That merely compounds the shoulder problem, and the bench press is coming up next. So Bill Kazmaier is a question mark, but he does lead over Ray Rigby and Andy Kerr. Dave Rowe. And competition is now complete in the super heavyweights, the bench press. Let's look at some of the action. This is Great Britain's Andy Kerr, 518 pounds, 235 kilos. Lost it! Very, very easy, Paul. That lift no problem at all for Andy Kerr, his second. And then the American, Bill Kazmaier. This is his third attempt, 235 kilos, 518 pounds. Is Andy Kerr. Strong. Oh, you can see him favor his left shoulder there, Paul. And Kazmaier can't get it done. 
So he's in at 501 pounds, but his shoulders apparently really bothering him. Here's Andy Kerr again, 529 pounds. Another very easy lift for Andy Kerr. And Andy Kerr has moved into second place and is beginning to catch up. It also appeared that Kaz was having problems with that shoulder. Now, as we move to the deadlift, this is where that injury just may tell. It certainly is, Paul. This is the real test to Kaz Meyer. The heavier weights are lifted here. Whether the shoulder will hold up or not, that's the question. Let's go back up to the platform. We're underway now in the ultimate test, the deadlift. Bill Kazmaier, his second attempt. 777 pounds. Looks very confident as he pulls. Oh, that was easy. But wait a minute, he dropped the bar, Paul. He dropped the bar. Two red lights, the lift does not count. He's very upset about that. You are not allowed to drop the bar in international competition from over four or five inches from the floor. And that's what he did right there. You got to put it on. You got to go all the way down with it and put it on the floor. Coach Doyle Kennedy explains it to Cass. Well, he dropped the bar right at the end there, Paul. That's what this allowed to lift. That was the reason. So Bill Kazmaier, because he didn't maintain control, misses at 777 pounds. So here is Andy Kerr, 794 pounds. This would tie Kerr with Kazmaier. This is a very makeable lift for Andy Kerr. He's got it. He's solid all the way up and down. What? Andy Kerr, 794 pounds. He is now tied with Kazmaier for a total of 950 kilograms. Andy weighs less. So at the moment, Andy is in actuality winning this meet. Each man has one lift left. Kazmaier, apparently with an injury problem. How does Andy Kerr assess it? But my best total is 982, and Bill's best is 1,100. Now this year he's only done 1,052, I believe. That's still 70 kilos more than me. But if he comes down, if he comes down towards 1,000 or just below, and he comes within my sight, so my goal is to maximize my performance so that if he slips up, well, I'll have him. Get it, man! So here's Bill Kazmaier, his third and last attempt. 22 more pounds on the bar than the attempt he just missed. And this is his last chance for a world championship here in Sweden. Oh, he makes her look easy. Oh, look how slow he's going down. Paul, look at this. He's going to drop it this time. And he looks over at the judges to make sure that they know that he knows he set it down perfectly. Watch again here. Very, very easy. But watch as he goes down. He's looking at the judges, sets it on the floor. I would like to have that man look at you like that. The play now goes to Andy Kerr. He has one lift left. We'll be back. We're back in Sweden. As Andy Kerr readies himself, we take another look at Bill Kazmaier's last lift. Some say that he should retire, but what does Bill say? I don't know that I'll be lifting forever. Some of the fellows have, have been injury-free, and it feels a little better for the competition. Uh, I really, I go meet to meet, and this could be the last one. Maybe I'll keep going. Next up is a man who could speed up Bill Kazmaier's retirement. From Great Britain, Andy Kerr. This is his third and final attempt. His opportunity for victory, 848 pounds. If Andy's able to pull this weight, Paul, it'll be the largest weight that he's ever lifted in the deadlift. He wants to beat Kazmaier bad. Bill Kazmaier wins the world championship. Andy Kerr cannot make his last deadlift. And that gives the meet to Kazmaier. Tell me about that last deadlift, Bill. Well, actually, it was pretty easy. I hold the world record at 886. I was just nursing my bad shoulder. Well, how was the shoulder? That played an important part. Yeah, I wasn't too sure there in the squat. I heard it snap on a second lift. I struggled through the bench press, but luckily I made it. Well, congratulations, world champ. 
As we look at Andy Kerr's last lift, there is a point of transition from leg muscles to back muscles. It's a sticking point, and Andy Kerr simply can't get past it with 848 pounds. So the world title in the super heavyweights goes to the United States' Bill Kazmaier. Great Britain's Andy Kerr is second. Australian Ray Rigby comes in in third. A powerful afternoon. Anaba of Japan, a tenth consecutive world championship, and he throws in a world record as well. And then Fred Hatfield, he waited 20 years for his world championship, and it comes here in a small Swedish town. A wily old veteran used experience and won a world championship, Paul. And then there's Kazmaier. He sets the weight down slowly with a smile, knowing it's a victory. A world champion year after year. He is truly the world's strongest man. So this is Paul Page with Dave Rowe. So long from Sweden. Now, let's go to Gary Gerald.